Sushruta for Neat is now available on the Google Play Store. Try it out for free. All right, students. So um, today we are going to um, look at um, uh, simple harmonic motion. But before that, I want to do a little bit of um, uh, you know explanation on how students can get our app. You know, <laughs> this week is a very good week to get our app. You know, so. You look at this, you, you should go to this URL. Otherwise, you just go to um, uh, the Play Store, Google Play Store, or you go to like play.google.com and you type com. Uh, com. You know, and the first app you hit is our app okay and so that is our uh, je app you know and you can see the video here um, um you know um, um and um uh, you can also uh you know uh, get that um, app you know now if you are a neat student, you know, if you're a neat student, then you can also go to Sushruta. You know, Sushruta is our neat app. Okay. And you can go to Sushruta and then um, uh, you can have, um, you know, you can download the app and join all the students who have been learning from uh, Sushruta. You know, uh, this is. These are some of the best apps you can get and also the most affordable apps. Today, if you uh, um, downloaded uh, 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 the uh, Sushruta or Ramanujan, a full year's uh, program will cost you just $59.95. You know, there is no other system that, that, that is at this price. In fact, the people charge in the lakhs for a one year program. You know, um, and this is the nature of um, um, this market, you know, and you have a very good app. We have improved our app very recently. We have added assessment to it, you know, and this week you have the lowest price because of the um, um, Independence Day offer. You know, it is 30 percent. You missed this chance this week. Next week, this is not going to be there. You know, we have extended the offer. It was supposed to expire today. I am going to give it a few more days, but it's going, going, gone because Independence Day has come and gone. Okay, so Sushruta for NEET is available, and Rabanjan for JE is there. You know, download these uh, apps and get going. Okay, now there is a second, more important app also for the people who are going to be taking the test next week you know there is a, um, a je coming and for if you are going to be taking je next week you need to download the nyana test prep app and and ready yourself by taking some mock tests we have um, a number of nine uh, eight or nine mock tests that that are available and more are on the way if you're taking um now, Jay, this time, let's say you take three or four tests, right? And everybody takes three, four attempts uh, for the JE mains, you know? And so you take an attempt, take another attempt, and then you appear for the um, um, JE advanced, right? So this is JE main apps, and take uh, you have to take two or three. And so before each of these tests, you need to take three or four. Now, if you sign up for uh, 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 Nyana test prep, you have enough. You have enough to cover the full uh, list, you know. And so this is the best time. You know, it is the least expensive app in the market, you know. Um, so look at that price. It's only four, uh, 300 rupees or less. 
you know so you um, um you know you have a very good offer here i would take it if i were you you know um and uh, go about it this coming week we are going to be adding on the need test as well you know so by uh, tuesday or so you will have the neat mock test also okay and so neat exams also coming september 11th mark the cal your calendars is the neat exam you know so this is the perfect time for you to um, you know um, be part of this process okay so let me um, um, let me show you where all you have to go okay so this is the nyana test prep app if you can see my screen right nyana test prep this is the sushruta app right com.nyanamarga.sushruta you just go and type com.nyanamarga.sushruta okay and you will hit the sushruta app you know and you say com.nyanamarga. Um, um, Nyana test prep or test app, com.nyana.test app, and you will get the test prep app, Nyana test prep. Okay? Nyana test prep is going to help you um, prepare whether you're taking the NEET exam or the G exam. It's going to get really get, get you uh, the confidence you need, the understanding of time. The, the app has a clock. Okay? And finally, it gives you the answers. It'll tell you, okay, now there are certain things in the last few days you must revise. You know? And this app will tell you, okay, now th this part is not so clear to you. Then you can go and study that material and then you can, um, you know, go about it, okay? So that's how this is done. It's, you have to hustle a little bit, you know, in the towards the end, you kind of have to do this, okay? So uh, please go for it and uh, there's, uh, you know, you will get a very good um, uh, result um, in terms of both. Price. This is only 300 rupees, 250, 300 rupees. It's your very good app, you know. And um, our um, uh, Sushruta itself, we have now because of the promo, 59.95 for a whole year. If you're going to be, uh, if you're an uh, uh, incoming class 12 student, your exam uh, is going to come uh, come at you very soon, you know. And um, uh, you, you, but uh, so if you miss this opportunity, you, now if you if you take it, you will at least get a full year. You know, at what price? Fifty nine ninety five. You know, some people they pay fifty nine ninety five for uh, you know after subsidies for one month. You know, Vedantu charges eight thousand a month. You know, uh, um, and uh, um, uh, different programs they they charge much more. You know, and this is available for a whole year. You know. So think about that and, um, you know, go about it and um, um, download the app. This app will allow you to access our lecture series all the time. And the textbooks are come integrated with the lecture series, come to the slides, and it comes with the material. Remember, finally, students cannot just study pure textbooks. You have to have supportive material, videos, uh, slides. And of course, assessment. Now we have a, a, a assessment module we have integrated, which will really help you understand. Okay, now I'm not following this material. Okay, I tried seven questions, one or two really I didn't get it. Then you go and learn from the material again, and then try more questions, same area. Then you will feel the confidence uh, that you need uh, to succeed here. All right. So without further ado, let me go to the matter at hand today. Okay, um, the matter at hand is simple harmonic motion. Okay, so uh, now to understand simple harmonic motion, it, it is quite counterintuitive. That much I'll tell you. You know, uh, <clears throat> simple harmonic motion tells you uh, something which you would not have understood before. You know, that in this world. There are certain things that happen continuously, you know, um, although you may uh, not expect it to happen, you know, there is no motor, there is no electricity and all that, but things happen in perpetual motion by themselves, you know, and so 
uh, that is a simple harmonic motion. This class, we will essentially focus only on simple harmonic motion. This is our Independence Day offer. You can just uh, free to call Kushbu if you have any questions. 972461089297246 call her talk to her ask her you know so that you can meet the needs but the simple thing you do download the app and buy you know the price drop is only for for a period of time and once that period of time expires it will go back to 12000 believe me it's going to happen very very quickly so uh, simple harmonic motion works like this okay Think of it, right? When something is moving in uniform circular motion, right? What is the work done by the centripetal force, right? The object is moving uh, tangentially. The force is radial, right? So it keeps rotating, right? So the force is not doing work on the object. Okay, there is a continuous force, but there is no work being done. Okay, simple harmonic motion also, at some level, it is a conserving force because it happens in the context of a conserving force. You know, and because it happens in the context of conserving force, you know, what does happen is there is a conversion of potential energy to kinetic energy and vice versa but the total energy stays fixed and as a result you know the body keeps moving all the time without expending energy in the ideal case simple harmonic motion okay so the let's derive the mathematical derivation of the simple harmonic motion equation and then you'll understand what i am saying okay so in the context of simple harmonic motion, you have a, a body, right? So far, what is d square x by dt square? That is the acceleration, right? So when the acceleration is proportional to the position, right? If the acceleration is proportional to the negative, it is a, negative relationship with the position right that is a equals negative omega square x okay when a is equal to negative omega square x right then you end up with a situation where the body goes back and forth back and forth back and forth okay and but the important thing is it always has to be uh, uh negative kx okay and when do you see this kind of a uh, force right so if a is uh, uh, proportional to is equal to negative omega square x right then what we can say okay what we can say is that um the force is also proportional to k times x okay so remember uh, let's say you have a force which is equal to negative kx right which force is, is negative kx hook's law okay the force on a spring is negative kx where k is the uh, spring constant okay so in a spring in an ideal spring what happens is you press the spring and let it go and the body will be in perpetual up and down motion forever. Okay, so you press the spring and let it go, it will just keep vibrating like this forever. Okay, or oscillating like this forever. Okay. Now, what solution satisfies? This is a differential, what is called a differential equation. Okay. The second derivative equals the constant times the original uh, function. Now, what is the solution to that such a differential equation? It is of the form A cos omega t. Okay, the solution to this is of the form A cos omega t. So let's uh, derive, take the derivative twice and see. X dot, that is 
dx by dt is r omega, right? The derivative of cos omega t, omega t is minus sine omega t, right? r omega minus sine omega t, right? So if it was a sine omega t, a cos omega t, it would be minus omega a sine omega t, right? So that is the first derivative, right? Now you take the second derivative, right? The second derivative is dv by dt. If you take the dv by dt, it is minus omega times another omega times a times cos omega t, right? The derivative of sine is cos, right? So negative omega square a cos omega t, but a cos omega t is what? Nothing but x. We started out, right? So this verifies that the solution to this equation, a of t equals minus omega square x equals this, um, uh, uh, you know, this function, which is a cosine form, right? So what, what does that tell you? If you plot <coughs> x versus t, right? And t, as you know, is forever going like this, right? It will follow a, the position vector follows a cosinusoidal wave, right? So what does that, what does that mean that x versus t is cosinusoidal, right? It means that the body is going this way, coming back, going this way, coming back, going this way, coming back, in one dimension, okay? So the body is just going this way and this way, this way and this way, this way and this way, and this way, and this way. Okay. Now, now let's derive the case when this happens. When does this happen? This happens, okay, when you have something, right? When you have this situation where uh, the force s equals negative kx and f is what ma according to newton's law so if you had a mass attached to a spring and you push that mass right the force that the spring experiences is going to be negative k times x okay and because the force is going to be negative k times x and it is a mass has a it has a mass m na equals negative kx therefore your omega square is going to be k over m omega square is going to be k over m remember that omega square is going to be k over m what is omega omega is related in we saw circular motion right in circular motion also you had an omega this is also similar omega here too is 2 pi by t, where t is the period of the simple harmonic motion. This is the time it, the, the simple harmonic motion goes, takes to go uh, 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 one uh, up and down once, okay? So that is the period, okay? So, so that's what's going on here. Now, it's important to understand that the second order differential equation d square x by dt square equals minus omega square x does not have only one solution okay it has a solution of this form okay if you take this solution right that also will will lead to the uh, you know the second derivative will come back to being uh, omega negative omega square a cos omega t plus b sine omega t. Okay, so keep that in mind um, because it's um, the uh, you know and so uh, this is the more generic form of the solution. Okay, and notice one thing. Okay, if you had something of this form a cos omega t plus b sine omega t, you can write this. If you take out a square root of a square plus b square, right, then you will have this become square.
square root of a square plus b square, the whole thing times a by square root of a square plus b square cos omega t plus b by square root of a square plus b square sin omega t. Okay. Now, a by square root of a square plus b square and b by square root of a square plus b square are in fact, okay, if, if you had a circle, right, and you had a square, the square root of a square plus b square b, the uh, radius at this point, right, this would be a and this would be b, okay, and therefore, a by square root of a square plus b square is going to be a by square root of a square plus b square is going to be cos of this angle or sine of this angle and b by square root of a square plus b square is going to be cos of cos of the same angle so you can write this of the form square root of a square plus b square times cos phi cos omega t plus sine phi sine omega t okay so this will just be square root of a square plus b square times cos of omega t plus phi okay so cos a cos b minus sine a sine b is what cos of a plus b okay so that's what you're doing here so you're reducing it to the form cos of a plus b. So you write it to the form root of a square plus b square times cos of omega t plus phi. Okay? Now, this phi is called the phase displacement. Okay, So this is, uh, you know, so, uh, sim, uh, call, so, uh, um, uh, omega is called the angular displacement, I think, you know, um, and uh, the uh, uh, phase displacement is, you know, from what point, if it started from, from zero, right, then you, you will just have a cos omega t, okay. But if it starts from, uh, you know, a non-zero point, it will still oscillate, okay. But if it starts from a non-zero point, then you have this phase displacement, which is what uh, results in that phi. Okay, so in either case, there is going to be this oscillation anytime you have this equation. And the general solution for this equation is this. Okay, a cos of t plus b sin omega t. Okay, so now at t equals zero, what is this going to be? At t equals zero, it is going to be a um, cos cos zero is one, right? And sine zero is zero, right? So it's just going to be a, right? So a equals x naught. X of t equals zero is a equals x naught. Okay. What is the v? The v you take the derivative and you set t equal to zero, right? That is going to be this stuff, right? T equals zero. So it will just be omega times b. That will be the velocity at time t equals zero. Okay. So that is the nature of this displacement. Okay. And um, so um, <clears throat> so keep that in mind. Okay. So now um, what he is doing here is the uh, uh, deriving the mathematical equation. Okay, so let's he's, he's first making an assumption x of t equals e, e to the power of lambda t. Right, you take the first derivative, you take the second derivative, you have lambda square. Right, now, in fact, what he's going to do, right, he's then rewriting this. Uh, so then you have lambda square right here. Right, so now substitute this in this equation. Right. So, right, so negative c times e e to the power lambda t equals lambda square e to the power lambda t. This and this cancel. So, c equals lambda square. 
and therefore if you take the roots right it will have two purely imaginary roots right lambda square equals negative c let's say c is a positive value the real number right then lambda equals plus or minus i times square root of c right and therefore um, e, the uh, what what happens here right so x of t becomes a a1 times e to the power of i square root of c times t plus b times e to the power of minus i square root of c times t right now this <coughs> You're going to use de Moivre's theorem. Right? De Moivre's theorem states e to the power of i x equals cos x plus i sine x. Okay, and using de Moivre's theorem, you're then going to get uh, end up with um, you know e to the power of i x equals cos square root of c t plus i sine square root of c times t. Okay. So once you use De Moivre's theorem, this, right, the signs are going to drop off, and you're going to just end up with the formula we already had. Okay. So um, and that's how we end up with uh, a cos omega t plus b sine square root of c t. Okay. Now the there are many cases which end up being uh, examples of simple harmonic motion. Okay, the case that you ha may have seen, right? Of course, some of you have seen the spring, right? If you have a spring, next time I'll try to bring a spring and show you what happens when you compress it. You know, but I'm sure you have seen these springs. You keep in shape, right? Now, the spring um, follows this fourth equals negative k x, right? Hooks. It's called Hooks law. Okay, Hooke's law states that the force is equal to negative k times x, and k is called the spring constant. Okay, now if you uh, uh, now because the force is equal to negative kx, let's say there was a mass of weight m attached to the spring, then m times a equals negative kx, and uh, a is what d square x by dt square, right? So if there is a spring and it's moving in this horizontal direction. The when you extend it, it will pull. When you compress it, it will push. Okay, that is the nature of the spring, right? That's why it is, it is f equals negative kx. If x is negative, k is pushing you positive, right? If um, x is positive, k is pulling you. The spring is pulling you, right? <laughs> so it is then doing this, you know, like making you go back and forth back and forth like if you are the mass right so m times d square x by dt square equals negative kx okay so i'm letting you go right it's just keeping you like this like we form circular motion a, a object in a orbit right object in orbit what happens this keeps going round and round and round and round right that's why we, we always keep these two related topics close by you know so um, so in this case, instead of going round and round and round, it's a projection of the going round and round and round, the projection onto the single axis. So going round and round and round, if you project it on, uh, you know, and you will end up with exactly this m m d square x by d t square equals negative k x. Okay? So now, what is this? We we talked about this omega square, right? Omega square. What is omega square? Omega square in this equation is just k over m. Okay, so if you put write omega square equals k over m, right? Why do you need that? Because you can then plug it into uh, this formula, okay? Or more simply, this formula, right? A cos omega t. What is the omega? Square root of k over m. Okay. Now, how does that help you? It gets you the period of the oscillation. Okay. So now. Having derived these things, right? What are we really interested in when, when it comes to the problem solving, right? We want to know what is going to be the speed of the mass at any time and how how long it is, uh, what is going to be the period of the motion, right? And so when we study it, how, how is it going to move? 
finally what is the uh, what can be said of the energy right let me explain the energy for also okay the energy is conserved okay that is a very important idea the total energy stays the same very surprising result okay and what happens is when it is pulling the mass right the uh, when when the mass is moving this way right that is in the normal uh, in the unstretched position right let's say the unstretched position of the spring is here right at this point there is no force Okay, in the unstressful position is x equals zero. Okay, so at that position at x equals zero, f is equal to zero. Okay, but because we perturb the system, right? The body is moving. Okay, so now the mass has some energy. Okay, at x equals zero. Okay, someone has imparted that energy to the mass. Okay. now what does the the mass do if it is moving this way it is compressing the spring okay as it compresses the spring the spring has potential energy okay and how what is the potential energy held by the spring it is the work done what is the work done kx dx integral kx dx over a period of time will give you the work done on the spring so integral kx dx is going to give you half kx square so the mass when it is takes its own kinetic energy and gives it to the spring the spring compresses 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 till the point when the mass stops then the spring starts to decompress and it pushes the mass okay and then it transfers its internal energy to the mass okay and there and this keeps happening again and again and again the total energy stays the same throughout the motion <clears throat> there's no new energy unless there is some um, friction or something here if there is no friction it will move like this and like this like this like this forever in this sinusoidal uh, form forever it is not sinusoidal but it is in time it is sinusoidal in time okay so it is a oscillating system what they call a oscillating system okay. so the angular frequency omega right we we had angular velocity omega right the equivalent of that is called angular frequency and that is omega square equals k by n omega equals square root of k by and remember square root of k by m and your life is going to be a lot simpler okay now so uh, so this is the first system that you learn which follows a uh, simple harmonic motion okay omega is square root of k over m okay so now the solution to that equation can be written in this form and we already talked about this phi which is the phase the initial phase okay so the phase of the uh, motion okay so x equal to a bar sin omega t plus or minus phi what is a bar square root of a square plus b square okay so keep that in mind okay and uh, therefore uh, a and b are constants right and when you take the derivative what is the uh, uh, dx by dt velocity right so how does the velocity change a omega times sin omega t plus phi this velocity is also sinusoidal how does the um, 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 what is the acceleration acceleration is also uh, uh, cosinusoid okay a, a omega square cos omega t okay so <clears throat> so if you had to plot it right you would say that let's say a cos omega t is, is a cos wave right uh, a bar sin omega t is a sine wave 
right? Then uh, uh, the the next one is uh, omega square a cos omega t plus phi is 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 also a cos wave. Okay, so what is this? X double dot equals negative omega square times x. So if this is a a cos wave, this is also a cos wave. Only thing it's it is inverted. It's an inverted cos wave. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is all the motions that you have. Total energy is conserved. The spring, uh, how much energy is there in the spring is given by half k x squared. How much energy there? The um, what is the energy of the mass? Like the kinetic energy of the mass, it switches between the kinetic energy of the mass. Remember, the mass in this case does not experience much potential energy change. Okay, but there is another uh, next uh, case we will take into account that also. But in this case, you're moving this way, that way. There is no potential energy change with respect to the mass. Okay, the potential energy is only in the spring. So when the mass loses uh, kinetic energy, when does it lose kinetic energy? When half mv square is changing, right? So when half, uh, when the velocity goes to zero, that's when the spring has the most compression. Or expansion. Just remember, the spring compresses and expands. Okay, the maximum compression, the maximum expansion occurs when the velocity of the mass is zero. Okay, so this is the nature of the simple harmonic motion, and this is how it works. The total energy is same. Now, what is how? If you had to find out phi, tan inverse b by a. Okay, what is a bar? The amplitude square root of a square plus b square. Okay, and sine phi cos phi can be derived from that. Okay, so we already went uh, explained this part. If you remember, I spoke about it uh, earlier in the lecture. Now, <clears throat> when you attach two springs together, right? What's going to happen? Okay. Springs are like capacitance. Okay, so what happens to capacitance in parallel? It is a summation of the capacitance. What happens to uh, uh, capacitance in series? It follows one by C one plus one by C two equals one by C equivalent. Springs are just like that. Springs connected in series, right? You end up with K by two. If you have two equal springs in series, you end up with the effective um, uh, spring constant as k by two. Okay. If you have two uh, uh, springs in parallel, it will become two k. Okay. So, because why is that? It is just similar to a capacitor. Capacitor also. If you had a purely capacitive circuit, it will behave exactly the same. It will also follow the same d uh, d square x by dt square equals negative kx kind of equation. It will also follow a very similar uh, set of uh, equations. Okay. Now, what if there was um, uh, uh, friction? Right. Friction also has an equivalent. That is when you have a resistance in the circuit. You know. Now, so this is the second case that we are going to look at. Okay. So. We discuss the spring. We discuss the spring where two springs in series. We discuss uh, two springs in parallel. In parallel, they add is additive. Uh, in series is uh, by two. Okay. So now we are going to introduce the case when the spring is there is a second force, which is gravity, right? Gravity is not going to do anything actually. Okay, what gravity is going to do is it is just going to displace the spring so that there is its um, its starting point or point where it is um, uh, it has uh, its uh, equilibrium position. Right? See, if if you when we kept it like this. 
the stable equilibrium position right is at t equals 0 x equals 0 right, is when the spring is unstretched right now when you hang it like this right the stable equilibrium position is where kx equals mg so that is the position of equilibrium and let's say you pull it a little bit it will oscillate about that equilibrium mg why is that it is because gravity is also a conserving force so you have two conserving forces one which is actually a constant right and the other is the spring right uh, uh, k, k times x okay so as a result you end up with the net force right if you have an ex another extension y the net force is k times that added extension okay when you, when you initially hung it down hung it right it was it, ex it extended by l and then that was the equilibrium position. Now, if you push it a little bit, right? When you push it a little further, there's a, this added extension of y, right? That produces the net force, and then it will oscillate about this mean mean extension of L. Okay, so um, so that's what happens. It's the um, omega squared is still the same, right? So m times d square y by dt square previously it was uh, you know whatever the x was now it is going to be the uh, it is not going to be uh, related to the l at all it is just going to be about the y y is going to be the variable so the added extension is going to uh, decide the motion and it is still going to be simple harmonic motion that omega equal is still going to be square root of k over m is just going to oscillate about a different point period is also going to be the same okay so keep that in mind that's what it does now he is giving another case which is the case of a block of wood okay kept in a bottle of water <coughs> So to understand this case, right, you must first understand Archimedes' principle. Okay? Archimedes' principle says that the weight of the floating body is equal to the weight of the liquid that it has displaced. Okay? So what does that mean? Right? The, how much will the body sink? What will be the equilibrium position of the body, right? Of the floating body, right? The equilibrium position of the floating body, it will sink to such a level such that, let's say the, uh, the mass of the block is M, right? Now, the mass of the water that it has displaced, which will be rho times A times L, because we are taking the square block, areas, uh, surface area of A and, and the um, it has displacement of L, right? So A times rho times L will equal M. Okay, A times rho times L will equal M. The weight of the floating body. What is the weight of the floating body? M times G, right? What is the weight of the displaced liquid? The volume that it displaces. Okay, a very light boat, right, will displace very little water. A heavier boat will displace more water. The weight of the displaced water will equal the weight of the boat. That is our condition. Now, when you push it a little bit, when you tap the boat a little bit, I am sure you have seen this. Many of you would have gone the, you know, decided I need to go and, you know, be with um, fishermen, right? Everybody likes to do that with all these adventures. Everybody is had, I know, you know, I want to go and be a special man, right? You go sit in the boat, uh, bu bu it will bounce up and down, right? That's what we are talking about here, okay? So, buoyancy of the boat, right? The boat will go up and down. Why does that boat go up and down, right? That boat goes up and down instantly because of simple harmonic motion. 
in the equilibrium position the two are equal but if you push it a little more the buoyancy is equal to the is proportional to how much you go inside okay so that buoyancy will uh, will be the force it is because the force is proportional to this length so that's why you end up with simple harmonic force the area is fixed okay therefore it, it will bounce up and down now boats uh, because they shape them like that right so that <clears throat> in itself the it changes this it, it is not k uh, uh, k times l because the boat is shaped little bit like this right the area is continuously changing right so when they shape the boat like this right most boats you will see it is shaped like that right if you sink some more the area is broader you see therefore the force is not um this this the buoyancy force is lesser okay or it changes you know so when you keep it like this the lower levels it will bounce more quicker you know but at the higher levels it will there's more um, support to keep it in place okay so that is part of the way the boats are kept right i don't know if any of you have been following what happened on independence day india has released its um, new uh, ship the uh, ins new uh, version of the ins vikrant is was um, is going to be uh, a float first indigenous aircraft carrier made by uh, uh, india you know a um, very proud moment for all uh, people um, you know, all the people of the country uh, so <clears throat> let me continue uh, instead of getting caught uh, in uh, other things so the gravity is negative mg right the buoyancy is a times rho times g times l minus y therefore what you find is that in this case right the angular frequency also becomes square root of g over l okay and this is exactly the same equation you get when you you will you will find that if you write this equation f net equals minus a times g times l times y and then you write f net equals m times uh, dy d square y by dt square right you will end up with the same equation um, um, uh, you know and the uh, when you cancel out the terms right when you cancel out um, m is what m is a times rho times y right or a times rho times l right so l is the length to which it has pushed pushed in right so a times rho times l right so that is the uh, uh, the mass right so a times rho times l that is the see the the mass of the boat is same as the mass of the displaced water and the mass of the displaced water is a times rho times l right so a times rho times l times d square y by dt square equals the force okay and so when you cancel it out you will just end up with d square y by dt square is negative g by l times y okay and so there is again this displacement force which is opposite to the uh, because the negative sign this is the negative sign g over l is omega square omega square is always 2 pi by t so from that you will get the time period of the oscillation 2 pi times root of l over g okay you will find exactly the same equation in the case that we will look next which is the simple pendulum okay so simple pendulum here's what happens in a simple pendulum okay notice that <coughs> the simple pendulum equation let me say this before we proceed further right 
the simple pendulum equation is only true for small displacements for small amplitudes for large amplitudes it is not true okay so let, let us derive the, the equation from scratch okay so here is the pendulum it has a weight mg it has a tension t right and now when you make it oscillate it has a acceleration what is the direction of the acceleration think of it like uh, you know um, what we learned in uh, circular motion right uh, t minus mg sine uh, sine theta equal equal to <coughs> m omega square r right the acceleration is let's say radius right so t minus um um um, um uh, t uh, right so that is in this direction right in this direct t minus m omega square uh, square r uh, t minus uh, n, ng um, mg cos theta right right t minus mg cos theta right equal m omega square r right if, if it was um, uh, uh, you know uh, equation for uh, uh, circular motion right now tangentially right what is the force it is mg sine theta this is if this angle is theta mg cos theta is, is t right t minus uh, and, and that causes the uh, radial acceleration now the tangential component is mg sine theta okay so mg sine theta equals m times d square x by dt square with respect to the tangential acceleration okay so there is both a radial acceleration and a tangential acceleration the tangential acceleration is what m times d square x by dt square equals mg sine theta okay it is there is no x so that's why that should be the if you, if you made a big if you made the pendulum go like a big angle then you will not have simple harmonic motion that is the point there okay but if you made it go a very small angle then sine theta is equal to theta right for very small angle sine theta equals theta so what is theta theta is this small angle for small angles theta is x divided by l right s is equal to r theta you know right when theta is in radians s is equal to r theta therefore x divided by l will equal theta for small displacements so now you have your equation m times d square x by dt square equals negative mg by l times x okay so that's the final equation right the m's cancel notice that in when you did simple harmonic motion with the spring the m was present the omega was square uh, omega square is square uh, is, is k over m omega square is k over m in this case the m cancels out so it is the omega square is again just like the uh, floating body it is again g over l omega square is again g over l so when omega square is g over l uh, then you write uh, uh, omega is 2 pi by t right so, so then have t again equal to 2 pi times square root of l over g okay so what does this tell you the mass does not change the period of the pendulum <clears throat> you can have a big a big pendulum little pendulum it doesn't matter what does change the period of the pendulum the length of the wire and the acceleration due to gravity so now if you wanted to make a pendulum with an oscillation of one second what should be the length 
right? So 1 equals 2 pi times square root of L divided by 9.8. G is 9.8, right? Therefore, uh, you can then do the calculation. Square both sides, you will end up with 4 pi square uh, L by G equals uh, uh, 1, okay? And therefore, you can find out the corresponding value of L for the pendulum to oscillate once every second, okay? That's how it works. Pretty much all the wall clocks will be, uh, you know, uh, correspondingly uh, tuned, okay? If uh, you relied on the simple pendulum, okay? So 2 pi times, so it is for small amplitudes, the angular frequency. Therefore, the theta is far, far less than 1. So this only works for small displacement. Okay, 2 pi times square root of L over G. Okay. Now, we are uh, considering the case of a rigid rod. <clears throat> okay. A rigid rod can also act as a pendulum. The only difference is, in this case, instead of taking a force equation, they take a torque equation. And what is the torque equation? Tau equals I alpha. Okay? So the torque is, uh, what is the torque? Right? This is the force, Ng, right? So what is the uh, transitional component? Mg sine theta again okay mg sine theta right so mg sine theta times l by 2 what is l by 2 r cross s so mg sine theta is the force r cross s is the torque so mg l by 2 sine theta equals i alpha torque equals i alpha and you, you therefore have an equation and you have to, uh, again, you have to uh, replace theta with, for small angle. So sine theta equals theta. So replace this with theta. And this is what? D squared theta by dt squared. And again, you will end up with a equation. Okay. This time, the important idea is that you will have, instead of the mass, you will also have a term for the moment of inertia, okay? And for, uh, for a rod, what is the moment of inertia about this one side, right? It is ml square by 3. So when you plug that ml square by 3, the m's will cancel. Therefore, you end up with 2 pi times square root of 2L by, by 3G. <clears throat> Okay, where does the 3 come from? It comes from the moment of inertia. I alpha equals mg L by 2 sine theta. How did you get the L by 2? That was the R cross F. The R was from the center of gravity. This halfway into the bar, right? So the force is from here. So um, in the case of a simple pendulum, the, all the mass is concentrated at the bottom. In this case, the Mass is through the length and it is rotating about the pivot. Okay, so that's how you end up with this formula 2 pi times square root of 2L by 3G. Okay, so I'm thinking of stopping here. Okay, I've gone a few minutes extra, but <coughs> I, um, my next slide deals with a simple pendulum question, but I will start there, okay? So, what do you have to do, right? The student is expected to download the app, study the material, attend some questions, and see if, uh, read the material, listen to the videos, attend some questions, and, and come back next class. All right, so much for uh, this lecture, I will now um, um, plan to see you again next week. We will continue with simple harmonic motion. We will do more problems involving simple harmonic motion. But I felt that I should spend enough time introducing the material. 
next week we will also spend a little time with the energy equation and how things work out i looked at all the three cases the spring the pendulum the uh, boat right and then the finally the rod rigid rod right and each of the cases finally the most important thing is you have to have an equation where the second derivative d square x by dt square or d square theta by dt square equals k times x or k times theta as the case may be okay therefore that's the main thing minus omega square and therefore uh, you end up with that omega square you, which gives you the whatever that constant is that becomes your particular frequency 2 pi by is the square of the angular frequency omega square whatever that constant is right it becomes the square of the angular frequency omega square okay so once you've learned this uh, clearly you see all that's going on simple harmonic motion is a lot simpler we have trust me it is um but then you must understand that you know the there is a second order differential equation etc 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 okay and that there is a conserving force that is what happens in the in each of the dimensions in the um acceleration situation the uh, velocity situation and the uh, energy situation you have to be able to see all these problems from these multiple dimensions always even in circular motion we looked at it from all these multiple dimensions once you see learn to see from these multiple dimensions things simplify and you will be very good at physics uh believe me and trust me on that do the problems understand the concepts understand the concepts well do the problems you will be in great shape and you will be well uh, well on your way to doing well in the je exam or the neat exam as the case i'll see you again next week until then uh, uh, best wishes to all my students if there's anybody who is going to be taking the je exam next week my uh, best wishes to you good luck we want to see our students be the best in the class in the uh, exam hall and produce thank us all right uh, i'll see you again next week thank you